pods. I don't even know why he's not, you know, other than just enjoying his life. Too many miles on his leg. <laughs> I was going to say, it's internally what you can see. There's more than ages. You know, it, it, it's truly amazing to come back and get to see these guys whenever I've had the opportunity to see these guys in crossing paths. And then Jose Contreras. Billy is uh, he does the Spanish radio for the White Sox, and also this year he's going to be traveling with the team on the road and uh, working with the Latin guys on the team and translating. So you're going to see a lot more of Billy this year. Other than that. remembered at our ballpark because all we have to do is go up to the fundamentals day. Have a race against Scotty Potts, huh? Every time I've got some neighborhood kids I take to the ballpark early, which which I do it quite often through the season. I go up there and say, hey, there's Scotty Potts. So you, you'll never forget as long as, as you live, if you're going to the U.S. Cellular Field, that Scott Potts, his presence is still there. <laughs> about the home run, but let's go back a little further. You know, your whole season, it was, it was an amazing, I'd say, commitment by you to concede because when you were in Milwaukee, you hit for more power, you, you're a strong guy, you work out. You know, how hard was it for you that year to make the commitment to say to yourself, my job is to be the catalyst, get on, wreak havoc on the base pass, make the players behind me better, to make this team go where it needs to go. Well, what that really meant for me was maturing as a player and understanding my skill set and what I could do best to help the White Sox win games. Uh, I had a real good rookie year in 03 with Milwaukee, uh, and, and I went into that winter saying, well, if I could have this type of year in my rookie season, I can be even better my, my next year. So I put a lot of pressure on myself to go out and, and try to be that guy again my second season in the big leagues, and I totally flopped. I ended up hitting 245. I stole quite a few bases, but I just didn't have the offensive year I had uh, that, I had, that I was able to have previously. So I get traded to the White Sox, and I remember having a conversation with Kenny Williams, and he said, look, I don't care if you hit zero home runs. I need you on base. I need you providing some energy at the top of the lineup. Uh, I, I, I need you to be the guy you were two years ago. So I, I took those words to heart. I went through the entire season and, and, and ended up hitting no home runs. But, but, <laughs> but, but you're right. I, I had to, it did me no good to go out and try to be someone I wasn't. I was best to this ball club, uh, trying to lead off, trying to hit my singles, and trying to get myself into score position for the guys behind me. We all had a, a specific role on our club, and I think that's what we were good at is everybody knew our, everyone knew their job, knew their role, and that's what we took the field and did each and every day. Uh, but I, I embraced it. I, I knew what I had to do. Um, I I enjoyed that, that uh, you know leading off and, and jump starting the offense. I that's kind of what my whole game revolved around is, is providing energy and get things going. So I embraced it and uh, and had a lot of fun. use that as an example. If you're going to ever talk to some kid that's now becoming a closer from other roles as a pitcher, would you use that analogy and go, just pretend it's the sixth inning. Don't even think about it. Now that's not easy to do, to block that out, because I'm sure as the season went on, you realize the same situations and the pressure that came yeah, with it. Yeah, I mean, I became more aware of the situations. <laughs> but, you know, like, what's funny is um, when I was actually named the closer, um, I went out, that was when Cleveland was right behind us. And I blew back to back saves in that three game series. That's when I was the day before yeah. when I was named the closer of the team. You know, and I took you know, I immediately, you know, I took that as you know, now I took all the pressure on myself and went out there and I blew those games. The third game out there, I remember what happened in Minnesota 
and I forgot about the ninth inning, and that's what made me successful later on was using that moment. It's amazing how often guys have to do just what Bobby did, and that's go through that tough time. Joe? No, no, you don't get to talk to Pods now. <laughs> so obviously, Joe Creedy. <laughs> Joe has just been going through the 2005 season in general, not just the postseason, not just the World Series. And I'm going to tell you, and I heard this yesterday as well from Chuck Garfine was in here and, and some of his teammates. And it was reflected that uh, Joe Creedy was probably the best third baseman that uh, he'd ever played with and seen. Yeah. And I'll say that uh, obviously I've been here broadcasting now. This is going to be 16 years for me and played professional baseball 19 years. And Joe Creedy, without question, is one of my favorite players ever. I got the opportunity to watch play baseball. And it was his everyday routine, watching him play at third base, he made it look simple. And I'm talking about, I was teammates with Robin Ventura, too, a six-time gold glove winner. Joe Creedy was so great at third base, it was so much fun to watch every day. So, Joe, thank you. And also, Mr. Clutch, if you need the big hit and run bat at the end of the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning, I think Joe Creedy was the man. Yeah, yeah baby! Woo. Frank, we had all these other great players over here, but when Joe needed to step up, he did. If they didn't get it done, he did. If they were out there, so that was great to witness, especially in the 2005 season. It wasn't just the two, the total numbers that he put up, it's when he did it. And he did it in the clutch all the time. Joe, talk about the regular season. I know there's so much talk about the postseason 2005. Talk about that year when, uh, when you felt this is a team that can step up and we can possibly, I know you had the big lead from the early part and it started to slip away late, but when did you think as a unit, this team is really good and we got a chance to do something special, not just on the field, but you guys obviously away from the field, you like each other and you got along well. I think it was, you know, for me, we had the early part in the season where we had held a lead for 20 some straight games or 30, whatever it was, and uh, it seemed like from that, our confidence kept growing game by game, and we had guys come to the field expecting to win. I mean, everybody expects to win, every player expects to win every night, but when you're going out and you're not trailing at any point during the game, and you have the pitching staff that, that we had, it seemed like, for me, it was like towards the end of April, 1st of May, I was like, man, we got a chance to beat everybody in this league. You know, we're giving the pitchers are giving us a chance to win. You know, we're getting timely hits, but uh, it just kind of snowballed from there. Whenever we had that streak, you noticed how you pointed out that the pitching was obviously the start and the key, but the defense behind the pitching because you got to have great defense for your pitchers to be good. Jose, how much confidence did you have every fifth day that you went out there? knowing that your guys are going to probably give you just enough run support and make the plays behind you. How much confidence did you go out there every fifth day knowing that I got a real good chance to win tonight? And I'm going to say, is that the year that you ran off from the year before to the 2005, 17 straight wins without loss? Y si fue ese año o el año, o, o el año anterior cuando perdiste la cadena de 15, 14 victorias consecutivas. Sí, creo que sí, creo que eso fue lo que nos llevó a, a ganar la, la World Series, la, la confianza que había, la humildad que había en cada uno de, de, todos, de todos los muchachos, la defensa, la defensa del equipo, eh, ofensiva, también un buen bien, un bien compacto. Y, y creo que sí, ese eh, fue 2005 final de 2005 y, y mi, la primera mitad de 2006 cuando tuve, tuve esa racha grande de 17 victorias al día, que en verdad yo no sabía que lo que estaba haciendo en ese momento, ahora yo miro y digo, wow, es, es increíble. Pero esas son las cosas que suceden cuando, cuando se va a ganar. Cuando se va a ganar, recuerdo cuando el Duque llegó al equipo en el, el Spring Training, los periodistas se le acercaron y, y le preguntaron que cómo veía el equipo y él dijo que, que era un equipo para ganar, que él había llegado. Chicago para ganar y después de la, de la entrevista yo le dije, pero tampoco, que no te trata. Y dije, bueno, no tenemos muchas estrellas, pero hay unidad, hay, y, y el estado, 
how's the interpreter going to remember all this? I'm up for air. He said, yeah, he had a good season. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 